If you've been following the digital FPV scene lately, you'll know things are getting interesting outside of DJI, Walksnail and HD0. And this is the Runcam Wi-Fi Link 2 camera and transmitter. And this is the Wi-Fi Link RX Digital HD receiver. Both of these are based on OpenIPC and the Ruby FPV stack. Now, they're not just curiosities. They're part of a real push for open, low latency HD FPV. And when you put them up against something like the Esheen Sphere Link that I reviewed a few months ago, there's quite a lot to talk about. So I'll take a look at what these are, how they work, and whether they're worth a look for your next freestyle build or ground station setup. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. The Wi-Fi Link 2 is Runcam's second gen digital FPV VTX. And no, it's not Wi-Fi like your phone. It's digital HD video over 5.8 gigahertz running the open source IPC firmware, which itself is based on the ESP Linux IP camera stack. You've got the transmitter and the camera and it streams at up to 720p at 60 frames a second with a sub 100 millisecond latency, depending on bit rate and distance. But typically I've seen about 40 milliseconds latency on this. You got onboard recording, UART control from your flight controller, very familiar looking six pin connector on there, and it's powered by five volts or USB-C. The Wi-Fi Link RX is the receiver end. It's also running OpenIPC with the Ruby system and it acts as a sort of dedicated ground station. You can output direct HDMI to a monitor or your goggles with an HDMI input. Got HDMI coming out there. And I've been testing this with my HD0 box goggles using the HDMI input. So you can just clip that on the front there. I've just been using some tape and it works beautifully, it's not too heavy. And this records your flights locally on SD card there. And there's an onboard web UI for setup and channel selection. As you can see, it comes with four antennas. You've got these two dipoles and two omnidirectional. There's a record button on the top there to start and stop recording. There's a joystick to control the menu. And then on the bottom, You've got a quarter 20 if you wanted to mount this on a tripod, if you were taking this into a monitor, for example, but I'm taking that output and plugging it to the HDMI input on my HD0 goggles as a Type-C USB and an OTG. And, and it's all very neatly put together. Also in the box, you get a power lead that just plugs in the side there. It's got an XT60 and you can power this off anything between nine and 30 volts. So typically that's three to six S, no problem at all. You also get an HDMI cable, it's mini HDMI. So if you're gonna plug this directly into something like the HD zero goggles, you will need a mini to mini HD connector or an adapter, no problem at all. And you also get this manual, which covers Pretty much everything, it got me going quite quickly, to be honest. All very nice. Now, OpenIPC started as a way to reflash cheap IP cameras for advanced features and security, but it's evolved. And with Ruby FPV, it becomes a low latency digital video system for FPV. You can sort of think of it like Betaflight, but for video. You flash the VTX and RX with OpenIPC, and Ruby FPV handles the encoding, the streaming, telemetry, and even overlays. And there's a growing community behind it on Discord, and it's genuinely open. No licensing, no activation, no phone home nonsense. In terms of fixing this to your quad or plane, it's got a 20 by 20 mounting pattern underneath. The pinout on here seems to be DJI compatible, but do check on your flight controller because that may be slightly different. It's an SD card slot on the side there. Nice cooling fan on top. And 
the camera is a 19 millimeter width so it's a little bit narrower than a, a DJI camera um, you can mount this on a three and a half inch five inch plane wing whatever you want really uh, you power it off five volts you can feed telemetry from beta flight or inav and it'll overlay the gps voltage and all the other flight data just like your regular osd now the rx unit well it's got a quarter 20 on the bottom so you can mount that directly on a tripod for your ground station or mount it on your hat whatever you want to do and you can run ruby view for all your telemetry overlays with live hdmi output from here it's got sd card recording on the side but i've been using this on my hd zero goggles it's almost like a perfect fit there just with some tape it works fine you just connect the hdmi out directly to the hdmi in on those and the great thing about that it's really easy there's no weird sort of goggle integration no binding faff no annoying cloud accounts so you just plug in the hdmi cable select hdmi as the input source on here and you're done so this wi-fi link 2 with its transmitter and camera and the wi-fi link rx are a really promising step for open digital fpv they're not perfect but they're affordable flexible and push the boundaries of what open source fpv can really be and compared to something like the eSheen SphereLink, this is a real system. It's not a novelty. If you're into experimentation, ground stations, wings, or just hate vendor lock-in, it's definitely for you. If you want HDMI output, OSD overlays, and open firmware, it's definitely a win. But if you want zero setup with DJI like polish, well, it's probably worth waiting a little bit longer. So if you're ready to get into the world of OpenIPC and Ruby FPV, why not grab one of these, join the Discord and start tinkering. And you can get these direct from the Runcam website, but Banggood have got their 19th anniversary sale on at the moment. So I've left a link and a coupon code in the video description below. And I'm planning to do a whole load of follow-ups on this with some real flight tests, flashing guides, and some range comparisons so hit subscribe if you want to see more like this and give me a like that would be fantastic thanks for watching and i'll see you next time